yeah, no, that, that, yeah, no, that reference. I know when I know you. I know not to drop references. <laughs> you are you. It's it's like it's like you're born yesterday, but like not yesterday. <laughs> I think you were born like a decade ago, but like in a secure chamber. Yeah, and like all you did was did. read and yeah. like do nerdy shit. What's what bothers me is like uh, people would be like, oh, you don't you don't know who fucking. You don't know who Harry Stanton Jr. is. I'm like, no. No. But it's like if I'm just not, I'm just not exposed to that stuff. You're not exposed to, to my stuff. Like, Wait, but what's your stuff? What stuff do you know about that the rest of us don't know about? Like, do you even do? You, what do you mean you don't know who Juan Cortina is? No, 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 no. That's the guy we're doing today. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you off because we're gonna start the podcast. You've never heard of the, <laughs> but, the Prince of Bandits. Okay. Huh? Yeah. All right, all right. You win this one. We'll be back. Today, guys, we're doing Juan Cortina. Mm-hmm. Um, some say Mexican outlaw. Mm-hmm. Some say Mexican hero. Freedom fighter. Some maybe. say uh, noble general. Mm-hmm. Some say battlefield tactician. Some people say just a guy out here trying to make it. Just a guy <laughs> out here trying to make it. Doesn't care whose toes he steps on. Doing Doesn't. his thing, ruthless yeah, opportunist, maybe in a real in a real fixture, and I would say uh, maybe not in the name you know, but definitely a person like in the West, a larger than life figure that had a lot of influence on a lot of places that we would consider Western. Yeah, especially yeah. the Rio Grande Valley. And just yeah. like the images that he brings to mind yeah. loom so large in the memory of what we think of as the West. But he's like, we're getting it. We've we've finished with the U.S. Indigenous. Mm-hmm. We're getting into the age of outlaws. I mean, they were happening concurrently, but Pancho way Villa. we're setting it up. He's the Pancho Villa before Pancho Villa. The Pancho the original the original Pancho Pancho Villa. Villa. I think the the author of the the book we read on this is Jerry Thompson yeah. uh, Cortina defending the Mexican name in Texas 2007. Yeah. I think Thompson was saying that this guy is like bigger than Pancho Villa ever in, was. That Pancho Villa was trying yeah. to be Cortina. That's what that's what he, I think he said that at some point. But his name is weird cuz like this is a name that we don't know. But mm-hmm. honestly, if we're looking if we're talking about like the actual effect of Mexico, the actual like long range, long term like mm-hmm. the amount of years he was active and how critical he was uh for Mexican US relations for uh, that for the number of the length. He's the more influential figure, I I think. Yeah. But maybe Pancho Villa sticks out because it's just more more recent. Yeah. And we're yeah. like we're more like that. Yeah, you know I mean. And just the the precedents that are set as far as how the U.S. treats Mexico, and just the seeds of that of the U.S. Mexico relationship, they really kind of come into fruition. Like patterns develop. Yeah. In the 19th century that carry into the 20th, and then of course into the 21st. But yeah, of course, we'll Let's see how it all plays yeah. out. May 16th, 1824. Juan Cortina, our guy, is born in Camargo, Tamaulipas. His father is named Trinidad Cortina, who is alcalde, and, which means mayor. And the, his mother is Maria Estefana Goseas Cochia. Okay. He moved to Matamoros at a pretty early age, so he's more tied to Matamoros. That's what I guess you would consider his home. Matamoros, it's like right on the modern U.S. Um, or Texas-Mexico border, like right across the Rio Grande. But at the time, deep in Mexico. Mm-hmm. This yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because like, yeah, the war hasn't happened and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Shit. I mean, there's Texas is still Coahuila y Tejas, right? Mm-hmm, and they're still mm-hmm. like open to, or they're still bringing in white settlers to just populate the area because it's just full of Comanches. Basically, that's the biggest mistake. The it's, biggest a, mistake. It's, pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty mistake. egregious blunder. <laughs> recruiting. It's the biggest recruiting mistake in the history of of Texas. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we can just invite all these Americans in. They're pretty they're pretty content, you know. They're pretty uh pretty peaceful people, pretty happy with what they have. They never really ask for anything more than it's what they're given, right? Pretty pretty peaceable. It's the biggest m- recruiting mistake made by any place in Texas other than uh, to, to, uh, until the schools that recruited me for football. Come on, mm-hmm. picked up. Mm, there you go. It all comes, it all comes all around. Comes, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. July of 1845, Juan Cortina is 21 in Matamoros. He marries his first cousin, 
Maria Dolores Tijerina while also having an affair with this woman, older woman, Rafaela Cortez, who was a widow. And, uh, you know, just just a fun guy. Right. Look, man, she had three kids. Uh huh. If you had three kids, Mm -hmm. you got to love that woman. You, uh, you, you gotta I, love that woman. She got three yeah, kids. You can't be, you can't yeah. be, you can't be running around with your He's, first cousin of all people. No, you're, yeah, your first cousin. Like, first of all, for, you can uh, marry first cousin that expired in 1900. It's it not did. cool. It's it, not cool. It went way out of fashion. That yes. was, uh, yeah, it wasn't cool then. It wasn't cool back then. But like, you didn't really, you know what I mean? You might have lived in a village of like 800 people. Like, you might have, yeah, you already, yeah, yeah. No, you don't, you only know cousin. Everybody's a cousin. Everybody's a cousin, man. We're yeah. we're all family here. This is an Applebee's, right? Yeah, okay. It's April of eighteen forty six. Marrying your cousin at, a, at an Applebee's is <laughs> just get married in an Applebee's, and you're just, already family. You know, well, yeah. If you're like, if you're, people are gonna ask you if you're getting married in, your, uh, in an Applebee's, like, is this your cousin? And you're gonna be like, no. Like, why not? Why not? not get on character if you're getting married in an Applebee's. Second thing they're gonna ask you is if you're getting married in an Applebee's is. Are you depressed? Do you need help? Let us know. I, I have mean, people you can call if you need help. No, that's not the Applebee's. We're all family here, but it's not the family who asks questions. It's mm. the family who just ignores. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the family you get slammed on. With yeah, it's family. Dollar just, margaritas. Yeah, you know? yeah. They don't really yeah. care about you. They're just drunk. They're drunks. Okay. It is affectionate because they're drunk. That's mm-hmm. that's, mm-hmm. that's all. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. April of 1846 is the outbreak of the Mexican-American War. General Anastasio Torrejon attacks U.S. troops at Rancho Caricitos, which is right outside Matamoros. And Juan Cortina, as a member of the local militia, is right there at the onset of the Mexican-American War. For the next two years, he's fighting in the army on the Mexican side. He's at Palo Alto, Resaca de la Palma, Buena Vista. And then at the conclusion of the war, I think he says this like later on in his life, kind of justifying everything he did since then. He says, I never signed the treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Well, okay. We, if, that if wasn't some, me. And then somebody had to explain to him like, no, that's not, but that's not how treaties work. Everybody don't have to sign it. It don't mm-hmm. get passed around. This isn't a, this isn't a petition for them to legalize weed. That, you know what I mean, I didn't <laughs> sign it though. This is not, a, I, no. I, he doesn't speak for me. Right. Here's the thing. I, I, it, it, the Mexican American War is one of the most interesting wars that we like that literally gave up half the country. Nobody mm-hmm. talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's just, and it only took two years. You know what I mean? And it's a year just and like a half, we, really. Like a year and a half. Yeah. And most of that, it was like them just retreat. It was, the war was over like in a year. Yeah. The Mexican and Polk's whole bullshit would just like go across the Nueces and just get attacked you know I, i'm not sure exactly what the the first battle is or whatever but i know like taylor's past the nueces and i think he like raises a flag somewhere outside of brownsville mm-hmm. like and then Brown. they get shot and not then polk's like american blood on american soil and it's like no but just because you raise the flag doesn't mean that it's oh yeah it's your soil you know oh, yeah, it doesn't have like- that power it doesn't consecrate the ground for the u.s it's not how it works they were looking for a reason like it was just it, it was, yeah they just they, needed a pretext yeah. they need a pretext if they i i think i read somewhere that they they, they attacked first but I, I don't have that verified in my notes so yeah. yeah it yeah it it also might have been the grand design of president mm-hmm. andrew jackson because he was always always spinning his evil evil webs right no that's yeah this like i think we will talk about this the next week and this week uh, just a little bit about there's like a bunch of like weird secret societies knights of the golden circle uh like oh yeah lone stars of the west or something like that a bunch of societies are just like yeah man what if like we just took over mm-hmm. mexico Mm-hmm. And the rest of the Caribbean, and put a capital in Havana, which just built on slaves, just a mm-hmm. slave and state. <laughs> maybe Nicaragua yeah. as well. Yeah, We're just yeah. just a bunch of weirdos who just yeah. who just need a good woman who just needs to be loved. We're gonna right? talk about filibustering next week. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'll be cool. <laughs> It'll be cool. Yeah. So Cortina, after the war, he begins working as a cattle driver, a teamster, and he's wary of the growing U.S. presence in the territory between the Nueces River and the Rio Grande, which yeah. you know completes the image of Texas. And he's like noticing uh, we got some new neighbors, right? Yeah. February of 1850, there's a meeting in Brownsville to create the Rio Grande territory, which is like a separatist movement that would create 
the territory itself would be a separate entity from both Texas and the U.S. because all of these Tejanos, their primary concern is over U.S. land speculation. And they have all these like contracts and like there's a, a stipulation of Guadalupe Hidalgo is that the U.S. has to honor the contracts that like Mexicans in Texas have. And Juan Cortina, uh, he can't write, but he does sign an X and then somebody transcribes something close to his name. But, you know, the author saying it, it was him and that he was on board with the Rio Grande territory. Here's, here's the thing about like those land titles and those specific uh, in like taking that to court in Texas in the 1840s is that this isn't our 1850s. This isn't a real judge. This is just a mm-hmm. nigga mm-hmm. who's like who just came in on a cart mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. on like on a wagon and he's just friends with all the people that are against you. Mm-hmm. They don't have to like this isn't these aren't real they're, they're probably army buddies and yeah, that's like, how he got the job. These are just some this just some Swiss dude who has some <laughs> idea about the law who like also has an interest in dispossessing you of your land. And so like the idea that this was carried out in any fair way is kind of like just a Swiss guy yeah. with with too many warrants yeah. in Switzerland yeah. who had to escape his home country and he came to Texas and now has vested interest in dispossessing you of his land because he's already a criminal or that's you know that's in his that's in his blood. That's it's, who he is, right? It's yeah, and he keeps wants to stop telling you about how it's, 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 it's you can't find stuff like that in Switzerland. It's like you're in fucking Mexico or tech you're in Texas. Like well, you you're, don't. yeah, like you're in fucking Texas. The, <laughs> The United States, they established this commission in response to the separatist movement because there's like a couple times. I think Henry Clay actually introduces the the territory as like a bill on the floor of the House, but it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. But they do establish a commission and it actually goes as far as to affirm some Mexican claims to the land. And it's like mostly peaceable and they're kind of being uh, they're being a little more accommodating yeah. at this time. Yeah. By September of 1854, tensions have increased in the in September Tejanos were forbidden to settle Guadalupe County, I think, by the the like county legislator, the local government, like outlawed Tejanos from from settling the area. Then in 1857, you've got the cart war, which is where Tejano Teamsters had their carts destroyed after undercutting like white Teamsters. And so it was like, oh, you're going to do the work for less than us. Well, we're just we're just going to destroy your equipment. Yeah. 1858, you've got the Zona Libre established, or the free zone, like right along the Rio Grande River. So the U.S. is able to import goods into the Zona Libre, which is like Brownsville, Matamoros. Think of those two as the major, major ports. And you could import goods there without paying the custom duties that you would elsewhere in Mexico. And so smugglers and merchants and opportunists and hotel owners and whoever else flock to Brownsville and Matamoros because now there is money to yeah. be made, right? My cash, man. Like, listen, smuggle, smugglers love, you know what I mean? Smugglers love not paying tariffs on their goods. Who also, likes paying tariffs on no, their No, nobody does. But free trade zones, I'm hearing a lot about them. <laughs> and yep. I keep hearing, and they, you know, it just doesn't seem to work out ever. <laughs> it, it just seems kind of like, fucks up a lot of local economies yeah. from what I've seen. Yeah, It, it also seems like they just fucking... Yeah, free trade zone, you know, is you know. But like, do you think? Do you think? Uh, this is I think we talked about this off here. Do you think people like who made the NAFTA agreements that we have now knew about like knew about this history and knew about how it increased smuggling and were just like chill with that? Like, nothing. What could go wrong in the era of crack? I don't know if they did. <laughs> like, what, I don't know because it's like I'm sure some. I'm sure there was probably some like nerdy professor who's just been waiting for his moment this entire life and studied this shit and was like, "Now wait a minute, guys, yeah. we've done this before." You like know, the way Doctor Fauci like, was waiting for like a virus. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I've been doing this for years, but now everyone mm-hmm. talks to me. Now, now everybody yeah. wants to talk to me. Now I'm the expert that everybody yeah. wants to talk, but nobody wants to listen. Everybody wants to talk. Nobody, nobody wants yeah. to listen. Nobody wants right? to listen because I'm telling you what I've been doing. What's this, going on? But nobody cares. <laughs> nobody like. cares. How this all pops off, where our story really begins, yeah. is in July of 1859. There's the there's this marshal, Marshal Robert Shears, whom they call the Squinting Sheriff, which I really like that because you just get that picture of him like you know, say partner, right? Mm -hmm. He tries to arrest a Mexican man and Shears sees the suspect in town. He goes over there, he starts beating on him. He starts pistol whipping him and Cortina sees the assault 
and he intervenes and he ends up shooting the squinting sheriff and he escapes with his family to Matamoros because now he's basically on the run. Yeah. So in this, like it, it does it, it's coming after a, a long at this, what this point was 1859. Mm-hmm. It's what 11 years of like, kind of, of like aggressive aggression against Tejanos in yeah. Southern Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. Uh, like just uh, what's it? Discrimination, mm-hmm. uh, outright murder, <laughs> outright, yeah. like, like in the, you know, in, 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 you know, where you could, you can kill Mexicans. You can do anything to Mexicans, anything to Tejanos, but nothing happens to you. Um, yeah. You think, can outlaw them from your County. Even. Yeah. It's perfectly legal, you know? There are bandits, you know, the people talk about bandits. There are bandits attacking Tejanos, moving them mm-hmm. off their land. It, there's, there's, some people are buying land peacefully. Some Texans yeah. are doing that, uh, Anglo Texans. And then others are doing it through very nefarious means. Are just trying to people, disenfranchise as much people as possible to make as much money as possible. Building these massive land holdings and all the people who, empo- who are in power are white. And mm-hmm. it just happens personally to to his own land. It's, it's like his mother's own land, like somewhere yeah. around Brownsville. Yeah, like yeah, side. yeah. So he's getting. So he's at this point. He's fucking fed up. Yeah. And he just sees this. They just in a in a cold scene of just going like just like the dude like tries to like come at him. And he just mm-hmm. like, he just shoots him twice. He I mean, shoots, shoots an authority figure. Yeah, he just you shoots know, him just right and there. Then, sweeps the fucking old guy onto his fucking horse and gallops off and everybody's like he was getting a cup of coffee when this happened mm. which is which is i know what look that's the last thing i'm barely awake <laughs> okay. i like to think he like was getting his call uh, he was like he saw him already doing it and mm. then went and got his coffee and was like now i can shoot the sheriff now i can shoot the sheriff <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right now that i'm now that i've had my folgers yes i can get get down to business yeah, no, right yeah yeah and i'm pretty sure everybody who saw it was like oh shit uh something just happened yeah. you know and sure enough it this is kind of like the first major incident mm-hmm. in what becomes known as cortina's war yeah on september 28th of 1859 cortina and about 70 of his followers 70 of his guys whom they call cortinistas they raid brownsville and they attempt to kill some mark men who are mostly like super wealthy merchants or public officials who have done the Tejanos or the Mexicans wrong, like mostly whites in position of power. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're like, we're going to fucking, we're going to kill you if we a, see you. Right? It's a lot of personal ass beefs. You know, a lot like, of beefs. A lot of personal front and center, like, fucking beefs. Fucking done. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and the, the, the whites in this town, like uh, uh, the Anglo Texans, like are like from all over. They're like, so most of them are from Texas. They're like some more European immigrants and they've mm. came and they've done all the speculation. They've taken over and they're like kind of just ruling over this majority Mexican population. And he's just going, they're just going door to door with a list of names mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fucking in the middle of the night in fucking Brownsville. Mm-hmm. Fucking all these on all these rich white dudes, all married to like Mexican ladies. It's kind of weird. It's a, how and all, that like works, young Mexican it? ladies. You know? It's very yeah. strange. Yeah. It's yeah. all old white dudes, man. Young Mexican ladies, and they're uh-huh. like, they're going door to door, capping people, trying to find out, trying to find these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers is hiding in stoves. It's why hiding in stoves, <laughs> hiding. Yeah, but, but yeah. Uh, like they kill a bunch of people too, yeah. and like it's uh, they kill. It's pretty they, messy. They don't get every. They don't get most of. They the don't get everybody. Yeah, they but really they, want. They get some of their guys, and then yeah. other like raid some uh, supply stores and ammunition yeah. stores and, yeah. and shit like that. They and had, there was like one guy who they were like. <laughs> he's like he just like they had respect for like the guy they're like i know he's in there mm-hmm. i would because i respect you i'm not gonna fucking go in i'm not gonna blow this fucking house down yeah. and like cortina is like looking in the window but he can't see him it's like it's, mm. it's a interesting it's a it's a it's, it's, it's thematic let's put it that way yeah so the raid is officially condemned by the mexican government but as far as the citizenry is concerned it's supported by mexican people on both sides yeah. of the border that cortina is now seen as as their champion or, or yeah. their guy because he's he's sticking it to the whites you know sticking it to the man he's righting the wrong of all this discrimination and oppression uh-huh. he's also righting the wrongs of what so a lot of people probably still feel is the wrong of the 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 treaty of uh hildago guadalupe yeah. hildago whatever yeah the, the mexican American war 
So in response to this, the whites in Brownsville, they establish a committee of public safety who starts to build up fortifications around what it what they now call Fort Gringo. I'm not Uh sure who calls it that. I think the Mexicans probably call Brownsville Fort Gringo. But after they start fortifying it, that's what it becomes known as. Fort Gringo is just like any coffee shop in 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 second war in the East End. Fort Gringo. Yeah, just like any gentrification. Like just, or a, or <laughs> just up, in, a, up in like Congro, or I'm sorry, Con Conroe or anything. Conroe, or like Conroe, yeah, like a Conroe coffee shop, Fort Gringo. You why? Know? Why would Conroe? Conroe is a pretty the white and Hispanic area. Is I'll it? talk about the gentrification that's going on in the East End off Harrisburg, and <laughs> like this is that 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 Hispanic ass neighborhood, mm-hmm. just a uh, fucking. Oh, we'd like to, we sell $8 mm. coffee. Mm. Oh, I see, I see, I see, <laughs> yeah, I see. Like, I, like, this is where I get my Fort, my pumpkin is, spice latte yeah, over, yeah, at, that is over Fort at Fort Gringo. Gringo. Yes, okay, <laughs> cool, right on. On Milby. Fort, Fort on, <laughs> <laughs> 1859 to 1860, this is like, I guess the height of Cortina's war, because I think it ends in 61. Cortina is waging a guerrilla war in against South Texas. He goes as far north into Texas as Corpus Christi. And like the surrounding towns are raising militias in response to the media frenzy because they picked up the story and they're like, Cortina and his bandits are going crazy and they're going to kill your mom and you got to you gotta be scared, right? The news goes national. And so it troops is- are called in to the area from as far away as Fort Monroe, Virginia. And of course, in the background of all this, you've got the Texas Rangers. And the, 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 the incident that's happening at the same time of this is uh, Jim Brown and like Harper's Ferry. So mm-hmm. people are like trying yeah. to draw connections. Like this yeah. is the Nat Turner's rebellion of the Rio Grande Valley. Uh-huh. And it's that's all, what, you see John Brown, Cortina, it's all part of a deep state they, conspiracy. Abolitionist deep state conspiracy. To, to overthrow <laughs> oh, this slavery. grand republic. Yeah. All <laughs> like, right. <laughs> yep. Overthrow the South. To some abolitionist people in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. <laughs> fund it. Yeah, like that's that's basically what the newspapers are doing. Look at do your own research. <laughs> yeah, man. do your own research. Do your own research. Do you right? watch Alex Jones? That's what people are saying. Do you watch I'm trying to Alexander Jones Boro? Yeah, it's just Glenn Beckenheimer, Glenn Beckensworth. With a, like with a huge ass mustache, mustache doing like fucking like on a board with like string, like yeah. see there's Cortinista and then there's fucking John Brown. They're both connected to mm-hmm. Detroit. Now let's think about what happened in Detroit. What happened? And also, how Detroit. somehow it's all veiled anti-Semitism. Yes, of <laughs> course, always, always. And then he runs out of yarn and he's like, "Damn it, can somebody go to the general store and give yeah. me some more goddamn yarn so I can finish my point?" Yeah, sucks. <laughs> April of 1860, this guy, you may have heard of him, Colonel uh, Robert E. Lee. He's appointed head of the U.S. Army in Texas because he's got to take care of the Cortina uprising. And Samuel Houston, he's governor of Texas right now, and he's kind of doing some maneuvering. He's doing some pretty shady shit, actually. He wants to outright establish a U.S. protectorate over mexico and so he sends a commission to investigate what's going on in the border and he even approaches lee and he's like hey if i do this do you want to be territorial governor of of mexico and lee's like i'll I'll think about it i guess but uh the the commission that he sends to the border to investigate what's going on they report back to houston they're basically saying that the texas rangers are going crazy (laughs) like they're they are unhinged the, the the rangers and uh, are <laughs> in reality like they're not like we think of like the rangers like as kind of a, like detective like like they're, that they're very precise in their method and their means but the rangers of this time um a, are just a get back gang like they just go back and they're just gonna kill some people that's it <laughs> like and like you know what I mean? They might kill them in skilled ways. They might be good at riding horses, but they're going to go in that town. They're going to kill men, women, and children. I always and... thought of it. I, I thought prior to this, I yeah. thought of the Texas Rangers as like Sherlock Holmes on horseback. Yeah. I, I but it's not. No. Like that. later, <laughs> later it gets more like, like when we're talking about like, maybe like uh, they afford white people, those detective skills. Mm-hmm. Like when we're talking about like range wars and people cutting cutting fences, mm-hmm. like towards like night to like the like the end of like the Texas range and ranchers and cattle, like 
that's when it's like, oh yeah, no, nah. I'm gonna try to figure out who did this. You know what I mean? You're sleuthing. And, you're sleuthing, and you're not. You're not massacring. There's a thing called Ranger Justice, and Ranger Justice is just killing people. Just a blank check to yeah, do so. Just, just like, yeah. Okay. They don't like that's yeah. They, they, <laughs> they do murder. <laughs> like, yeah. No, let's not let's not put that. Let's not write yeah, that out. You know yeah. what I mean? They were uh, a lot of blood on on their hands. Give some of that Ranger Justice. Ranger Justice. <laughs> like, like, Cold War. I'm sorry, not the Cold War. The Civil War. Yeah. The Civil War is imminent around this time, and Houston thinks that if shit gets bad enough, he could forestall the Civil War with a war with Mexico. And I, another thing I neglected to mention is that the com- the commission that he sends to the border area, he also sends like emissaries to Cortina. And so my thing, my and this is just speculation, uh, spec speculation shun on my part i think houston with since he wants to establish that protectorate and he kind of knows he's like more or less sympathetic to cortina and the plight of the tejanos maybe he's trying to see if this is like a populist leader whom he could incorporate into his fold as part of his grand design you know what i mean i got nothing to prove that but uh, just knowing what i know about houston and cortina and stuff it kind of it kind of makes sense in my brain uh, Cortina will do whatever's good. Like he's a mate, mm-hmm. he's a Mexican patriot, so he's gonna do what is Mex best for Mexico first. But yeah. then after that, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. so, I would, I don't think he no, would go. It, with it's that. yeah, I would, yeah. yeah it's, he, he probably wouldn't go for it. But yeah. that's not to say uh, maybe if Houston didn't sweeten the pot enough, I don't know. No, no, he he. That's the one thing I feel like certain about Cortina is he spent the like. One thing was certain, do all of his stuff. He, he did not rose. like white people. He did not like, yeah, Anglo Texans. He was yeah. fine with like other white I, white people. I, I don't think he was like with white people. It was Anglo Texans. Yeah. And Anglo, like he, he actually was pro United States during the Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. very pro US. Yeah. He does not like the fucking Texans. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> Houston kind of epitomizes yeah, that. Yeah. So I don't think he would have gone for it. But, yeah, I mean, Houston's going to try. You yeah, know, in no, this no. hypothetical scenario. Oh, he would have took, took the meeting and he would have took your cash if you gave it to him. But yeah. he wouldn't have done shit. Yeah, he wouldn't have <laughs> done anything. No. Yeah. May and June of 1860, Cortina is on the Rio Grande River. He enlists in the fight against the Mexican conservatives because there's an uprising in Mexico against liberal president Benito Juarez. And Cortina is on the side of. Juarez. Jump forward a little bit in May of 1861. There's a massacre of some Cortinistas back in Texas, and Cortina is determined to reestablish himself in Texas, and he's like rallying men to his banner. Mm -hmm. Now he enters back into Texas, and he's fighting the Confederates in addition to the Texas Rangers. And so the Confederates, they complain to the governor of Nuevo Leon and Coahuila, which are two states in Mexico. This guy is Santiago Viraori, about like, hey, you need to rein in Cortina. You know, you've got this this Mexican outlaw that's committing depredations in Texas. Please take care of this. And Vita Uri, he just kind of downplays the whole thing. Like, oh, you know, I'll see what I can do about it or whatever. Vita, Summer. Vita Uri's death is kind of insane. Did you I don't, I don't know. I didn't really. I, I thought he it. got like shot. Like he like, they like lined, like they, they were playing music. Like, like playing like a song and like he like got part marched through the town, then shot up against the wall to like polka, like yeah. polka, like polka music. Yeah, like, I think <laughs> I remember a, reading something. Yeah, like just like, like a okay. weirdly violent death. Yeah, for this guy. But that's a that's a side note. Sorry, he was like bit pretty pretty elitist as well. So I can imagine that there was no love lost. For... I think he sided with the conservatives in the in the whole conservative liberal thing. But let's see. Yeah, yeah let's, he eventually let's... does his whole yeah his bullshit. Yeah, summer of eighteen sixty one. Mexican government is actually cooperating with the Confederates. There's a warrant for Cortina out, and he's only got about like fifty guys. So he decides to seek refuge in the mountains and lay low for a little bit. Meanwhile. Yeah. The French, the Spanish, and the English agree on a joint occupation of Mexico in response to Pe- President Benito Juarez. He gives, a, he announces that there is a two-year moratorium on the repayment of outstanding debts to those nations, and so they're basically, you know, France, yeah. Spain, uh, Spain, and England are basically like, that's not going to fucking happen. We're just gonna, we're just gonna invade and take what we can get in repayment of that debt. 
the the Spanish and English end up pulling out because they realize yeah, that France that's wants. Right. But the, but the fr- French yeah. France doubles down. It it the Mexicans like in the Confederates while they like kind of like sync up and start looking for Cortina is because uh the the Confederates are like trying to sell their cattle through Mexico. Yeah. Because all the U.S. ports have been blocked by the U.S. Navy. Yeah. And so like it's a money situation. Mm-hmm. There's you know they've I mean? got Matamoros is like the major yeah. port and like Baghdad. There's apparently Baghdad, Mexico, which is like yeah. a suburb, or like Playa Baghdad still exists on the map, and that's where they're exporting all of their stuff to yeah. to Europe, but also to like Boston and New York. So you have you've got traders in uh in the union mm-hmm. just private citizens who are like yeah we'll take confederate cotton i don't care yeah, they don't give a fuck. Fuck. They don't, it came from mexico where are the cotton fields in mexico eh, yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, show me that i don't care yeah you know? i don't care the french invasion probably the most famous incident of this war is on may 5th of 1862 there's fighting around puebla general ignacio zaragoza repels the french general charles latrille on Cinco de Mayo, of course, and that's wow. where the holiday originates from. Late of 1863, newly minted Lieutenant Colonel Cortina returns to Matamoros, and like we were talking about, this has become a Confederate trading outpost. And so you've got the Confederate presence in Matamoros. Meanwhile, the Union is enlisting Tejano and Mexican raiders to disrupt those supply lines because they would like trade for goods from the mm-hmm. Confederates would trade for goods from Matamoros. And then they would like send the weapons up into Texas for distribution throughout yeah. the rest or, you know, throughout the rest of the, the Confederacy and the unions like, yo, just do some raiding for us. Just hit, hit those supply lines, man, hit those stagecoaches. Right. It's a weird, it's, it starts to become a weird front of the civil war that involves kind yeah. of Cortina and his raiders. But then also on the other side of the border, you have the French, who the French, uh, the conservatives kind of go the line with the French and they become like yeah. this imperialist army. And then like the French are getting mad at the U S because the U S is giving money to the, the Cortinistas to, to who, are, Cortina, yeah. who are with the liberals and uh-huh. who are like fighting the imperialist army. It's like a two, a, a eight side, a six side war. Yeah. And like, yeah. <laughs> that involved a bunch of bandits. It's, it's like, it's like got the framework of the cold war basically. Yeah. With, you know, yeah. Uh, November of 1863, this Union general, Nathaniel P. Banks, arrives in Matamoros with like 7,000 guys, and he establishes himself at Brownsville. And this is where Cortina allies with Banks, which, again, like Josh said, upsets the French. Yeah. And the Confederates are even making overtures to where it's like, hey, you've got a hold of Matamoros. We kind of need this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we work something out? December of 1863 to January of 1864, Cortina wants to be recognized as governor of Tamaulipas, which is the state that... Matamoros is in and declare it for the Mexican Republic for Benito Juarez. And he's communicating this to Juarez through Santiago Vida Uri. However, Juarez cannot recognize him because that would legitimize the process of launching coups as a way to gain political power. If Uh. Cortina is recognized, it's going to set a dangerous precedent where people just think, okay, well, if I want power, I just have to do what Cortina did. And it's going to undermine the the traditional routes or the more uh, the less bloody routes to power, I guess. Here's the thing. That's already going to happen, dog. So it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. <laughs> this like, this like, can of worms has already been. Yeah, open, it's already you know? open, dog. Yeah. And so he's not ultimately recognized by Juarez, but he does uh, drive out all of the competition in Matamoros and names himself governor of Tamaulipas mm-hmm. anyway. And he starts like sending receipts from customs houses to Vita Uri in the hopes that like, he can buy his way into the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so early 1864, a power struggle erupts between Vida Uri and Juarez and Cortina. He's basically just trying to hold on to power against the French and Vida Uri and uh, the Confederates. And yeah. they're like, there's union pressure to seize Confederate cotton shipments and like stop the trade around Matamoros. That way they can kind of strangulate the, the Texas Confederate economy. And like the French and the Confederates are in a temporary alliance to push Cortina out of Matamoros. And it's like a whole, a whole, a whole mess. It, it, Cortina calls it, he says that he was caught in a circle of bayonets, which I thought was pretty cool. He's like in this weird thing where he like, and he's getting money from every, like everywhere. He's getting money everywhere, yeah. off the, off the sell of uh, this cotton out of Matamoros or out of, you know, a, a cattle out of Matamoros or whatever. That's still, they're still raiding and getting cattle anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Also, he's controlling the road between Matamoros and, and Monterey. So any yeah. like any anything that comes to a seaport that needs to go to Monterey 
if you any anything that goes through there, he's checking it. Mm-hmm. All his he has all these these bad these bandits or banditos or desperados on this road who are all checking these bags and he's taking cash. <laughs> and yep, so it's like yep. he's amassing fortunes. Yeah, he's yeah. Late September of 1864, General Thomas Mejia of the Imperialistas, which is a, a an alliance between the Mexican, like parts of the Mexican government mm-hmm. and the French invaders. Yeah. Uh, Mejia marches into Matamoros. He meets with Cortina and basically forces Cortina to temporarily side with the empire. However, that's obviously not where Cortina's heart is or his loyalties truly are. Some, some people say they just gave him like cash. Like that's like the rumor that he just got a bunch of cash. He, was he just like, threw a sack of gold in front of his feet. Like, and we're yeah, like, "You're like, with the empire now," and it's yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> sure, dude, <laughs> cool, cool, dope, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I've, I've always been for the empire. Yeah, yeah. this is what, it's a way to get it done. End of the Civil War. Border descends back into chaos, and you've got Confederate troops trying to cross in to Mexico, and Cortina's kind of playing like goalie, I guess, if yeah. you want to think of it like that. Where if he catches, if he catches some Confederates. He's going to kill them, you know. Some they, they, there was like one group that was worried about crossing back in because he, Cortina was going to shoot them if if they found them. It's like he found them. It's like weird, like the the governor of Missouri, I think the governor of Arkansas, like a bunch of like like Confederate yeah. like bigwigs like went to uh-huh. Mexico because uh-huh. they're afraid of like the prosecution. It never really happened. Hey man, <laughs> yeah. when you've done a bunch of bad shit and your government has collapsed, yeah. You gotta get out. You gotta flee. That's it's smart. It's smart to flee. You gotta you gotta go specifically to Mexico or yeah. Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. Right? No. That's. Mm? Yeah. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> I, I don't want. I don't, yeah, I don't know <laughs> the weird. I don't weird, know. <laughs> like I don't know why. I don't know why fucking Argentina and Brazil are like sending like vacation packets to like every fucking Nazi. <laughs> like, <laughs> like no, no, it's a great place to retire at, bro. Yeah, man. After you've done a bunch of crazy shit. Yeah. yeah. Markets dried up, I guess. I don't know. Cortina is saying to the Union. So Cortina is no longer with the the Empire. He's redeclared for Juarez and the Mexican Republic. He's telling the Union guys (laughs) that he's in contact with that he's been appointed by Juarez to secure Tamaulipas from the Imperialistas, and he needs weapons, right? And he's raiding for some, since there's, since there's no one to really defend South Texas anymore. Now that the Confederates are gone, there's kind of a power vacuum and everything's up for grabs. And he's also receiving some from the Federals or the Unions or the Unionists, Union guys, the U.S., as they, being like Philip, Philip Sheridan, uh, Sherman, and Grant, they also all want the French out of North Mexico because you're kind of fucking up the Monroe Doctrine here. And then you've also got massive amounts of black troops are swelling Cortina's ranks, so he's... He's reasserting himself. The the, the 25th Infantry, Infantry Regiment, which I'm pretty sure it's like a part of the the the, the whatever comes to the black, the Buffalo Soldiers, like is on the border. And it's this weird thing where like they're just like there's a lot of black people and like free black people, a lot of black soldiers at this time are just it's stationed right here. And like mm-hmm. people know I can go across that border and get more and get and get money being a part mm-hmm. of the court so we have like a lot of black troops in this ranking which is interesting like yeah. and i've never seen a, even a photo of that but I, I, now i'm thinking of like a black dude who's a newly freed slave who ran away and is now in the in and found himself in brownsville in a sombrero mm-hmm. with a bullet belt across mm-hmm. his chest mm-hmm. fighting against the french the imperialistas, but the part of the imperialistas are Austrian troops. Yeah, there's also and, Austrians yeah, around. It's like, like a it's, weird what's, fucking what's going thing. On? <laughs> and it's like weird because it's like this is the end of the Civil War, so trench warfare is kind of taken in place. So like, yeah, it's like a new military tactic. So they're getting out of trenches and Matamoros, fighting Austrian troops with a sombrero with on a sombrero the entire time, and a bullet like, belt. Okay. And there's a palm tree right over there. It's an interesting, <laughs> weird thing, weird part of history. I mean, there's also, a, also, also, also a city called Baghdad. Like, yeah, what's so what's Baghdad, going on? You a, know? Yeah, it's everybody's got six. Is this is a Salvador Dali painting. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, it's a weird time, dude. It's an interesting it's a weird time. time. And so Mejia still has control of Matamoros, and he's on the hunt for the Cortinistas who are kind of around the area. Through the summer of 65, Cortina's doing his, his raiding. He's hitting stagecoaches between Monterey and Baghdad, and the Imperial Elistas are receiving custom receipts from Matamoros. Yeah. So they've got like a, a solid source of funding, while the Juaristas are basically forced to impose loans on their wealthiest citizens, which I imagine wouldn't make them very popular. 
With the wealthy citizens. With the wealthy citizens, yeah. yes, of, of course. October of 1865, General Mariano Escobedo and his forces, which are who are aligned or whom are aligned with, no, who is right? Anyway, their war is aligned. They arrive at Matamoros and Cortina, he assists in the siege of Matamoros. And there's kind of like this liberal crisis in leadership and that all of them want to be eventually declared governor and they can't decide on who. But in March of 66, they agree there's like a compromise candidate that emerges and he's recognized by this guy, Juan Jose de la Garza. They're all, he's recognized by Cortina and the other liberal leaders as the governor of Tamaulipas. It's like this weird Patron situation where like all of these guys are these different bosses mm-hmm. in around. Like it's not just Cortina in this area now. Now there's like a bunch of different Patrons, a bunch of different called, kind of Cardillo kind of guys mm-hmm. who are just like, and it's they have turn, their right? own little militias and their own yeah. little followings and mm-hmm. their own kind of everybody's becoming an Easter. Also, if I ever get real fans, I want you all to be called Stokes Easters. Stokes Easters. Stokes Easters. Stokes Easters. Stokes, uh, Stokes Easters. That's gonna be hard to launch, man. That doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. You know? Hey, does does fucking Cortin Easters really roll off the tongue? Cortin Not- Easter, yeah, because the 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 there's a vowel. You know, okay. all right, all right, stop ruining my dreams. Yeah, there's, there's a vowel that you're allowed to attach. Yeah, the stop ruining my dreams. On, on, so, uh, June of 1866, the Juaristas and the liberals score a huge victory at Mesa de Santa Gertrudis, which I think is like west of Matamoros, still on the border. Still on like on the river, but on the on the Mexican side, Escobedo smashes into the Imperialistas. Cortina is not present for this, but this is like this is the it's called by Jerry Thompson, the Waterloo of this war. And like the Imperialistas never, never really get their shit back together. And they kind of disintegrate over the next few months. August of 1866, Cortina issues a pronunciamiento proclaiming himself governor of Tamaulipas now and he starts consolidating power and securing all of the roads for himself meanwhile he's campaigning against Servando Canales who's this other guy that he's like you know he's got a rivalry for leadership with they they've got their power struggle going on and then Philip Sheridan he orders troops into Matamoros to protect US citizens because there are some citizens in the area who are yeah. caught in the crosshairs of this struggle one weird thing again that imperialist army disintegrates. It's just all a bunch of Austrians. It's a bunch of Austrians. <laughs> this is a bunch of it's weird. This is what the Austrians just in northern Mexico, just as 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 just fucking as as prisoners. It's like how the fuck did you like I, that that part fascinates me a little. You bit. can't make it up. You know the yeah. truth is stranger than fiction, right? Yeah. yeah. So from 67 to 70, Mejia is killed in like August of 67. The liberals are now triumphant. And then from here, there's like two series of uprisings in Matamoros by former Juaristas who like were with Juarez. But then once they saw an opportunity for power for themselves, they decided to take it. And Cortina is like the top lieutenant. Basically, he's sent out by Juarez now because he's like kind of proved himself. Yeah to crush those rebellions. And so there's like a reversal of roles to where those uprisings, there were a bunch of bandits just doing crazy shit. And now he's the one enforcing discipline, you know? And the, 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 the death of, of Mejia is super interesting that, 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 that the siege of Coitaro or whatever. Yeah. That the emperor Maximilian, which is the emperor of Mexico under this Imperial French, whatever the fuck this is. And they're both killed in a firing squad. Uh-huh. At, at, at this at this this huge siege in like the middle of in the middle of Mexico. Mexican history is interesting. It's 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 very it's very interesting. Intricate. Yeah. Intricate, intricate and interesting. Yes. Yeah. 1871, there's a contested election. Juarez, none of them, none of the candidates get like the proper amount of votes. And Juarez is named president by Congress. And the country becomes divided between three different main factions which rally around the candidates. You've got the Porfiristas of, under Porfirio Diaz, the Lerdistas under Sebastian Lerdo de Tejada, and then the Juaristas. Diaz declares himself in revolt, mm-hmm. accusing Juarez of having stolen the election yeah. with Dominion voting machines. Yeah, <laughs> that utilize a German server. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And Hugo Chavez mm-hmm. is somehow also implicated and in also, the midst yeah, of all no, of yeah. this. Yeah, and right? also, uh, 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 what's the old boy? Oh boy, I'm, I'm trying to think of the guy. The the Chinese, 
whatever he is, chairman, whatever he Z, is. Xi Jinping? Yeah, Xi Jinping. He's also implicated in this. In 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 the election of of, of Benito Juarez. Yes. Right? In, yes. In, in Mexico. In, Yes. Yeah. yeah. People don't like when we do political stuff, and I can feel. It. <laughs> I don't. I like it. It's for me. Clearly, you know. Yeah. Eighteen seventy-one to seventy-five. Cortina is in Matamoros, so this is like a four-year period. And just to get the background on it, there's like an insane amount of cattle raiding mm-hmm. going on across the river. They're like yeah. stealing a bunch of fucking cattle yeah. from all of the biggest ranchers in Texas and crossing at the low points in the river. And Cortina is getting like insanely rich. You know, he's buying up all these different ranches in Tamaulipas and building them up. And there's like a behind all this, there's like a Cuban cattle contractor who's like, I'm not going to buy the cattle at Brownsville and, you know, have to pay or have to yeah, yeah have to pay what the Americans are asking. Yeah. However, if you want to steal that shit for me, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say no. You know, we can work something out. Right. I think uh, there's an interesting uh, kind of like with the Texas Rangers. This is where they're kind of doing some detective work uh, before mm. they do murder a lot of people. They okay, do before people. the murders. Yeah, they, before, okay, the, right. before the murders happen. They do some te- detective work and they're like, and they, where they find out like they see like Cortina like putting these cattle onto a like schooner mm. going to Cuba mm-hmm. and they get on the little schooner or the little boat. Yeah. And they're like, these are brands directly from yes, texas like from our yeah, guys yeah from yeah from from large ranchers such as richard king who are dudes who were yeah we'll get to a little bit later <laughs> money powers you yeah, don't want to fuck with yes. right yeah there's also a lively i think a hide trade that emerges in the area and it's also like pretty good for the mexican economy because you're yeah. you're bringing all this commerce into the area which guess, is cool but guess also what dirty money is of, Guess what dirty money is? What's dirty money? It's still money. Come on. Still money. <laughs> still hey, man. Money. That's right. <laughs> and there's also like Grant's kind of worried about it, too, because yeah. word's getting back to him. And some people are saying, like, this is war. Is it not? We should go to war over this. Right. Yeah. But what is a war? That's the what thing. Is a war. <laughs> yeah. Come war. On, yeah. We can be at war, but not be at war. Mm-hmm. We can be crossing borders. Mm-hmm. But not be at war. It's a whole thing. I mean, we're still like at war with the Apaches at this time as well. That's mm-hmm. still like going on, like yeah, what, 500 they, miles no to the, the west. US you know, for huh? any war, the Mexican American War wasn't that popular. No, no, there's not a lot of popular. Like, war. There's, like, so no, like, <laughs> there's, there's so many. There's so many. Them, to not, look, none of them are popular. At. It's kind of crazy. 1872, the military revolt is crushed by the under uh, the other generals. I think the one we talked about before with the the three factions. Mm -hmm. Cortina is around Matamoros and the Juaristas are triumphant. So problem solved, right? Not exactly. In July of 72, Juarez just drops dead of Mm -hmm. a coronary seizure. And so Lerdo is named president and he's under pressure to order Cortina back to Mexico City. And he does so. But Cortina's like, no, I'm kind of having a good time. I don't want to go home yet, right? His thing about not going back to Mexico City is like he just doesn't want to be under the the rule. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think he also, I think he, I don't know. That, well, Lerdo that was, isn't his guy, you yeah. know. And Lerdo's yeah. calling him back, and I think I think him and Juarez had an understanding yeah. to where he was like, Cortina is the the warlord of of Matamoros, mm-hmm. and he's got this pretty big following in Tamaulipas. Yeah, and maybe I'll just let him have it, and he won't do an uprising against me you I, I know think maybe he, there's kind of that implicit understanding like we'll just kind of i'll give him his way and we'll chill out i think he also knows like this like implicit factor of like i have power here if i leave to this other place i have yeah. no power and no yeah troops. so i'm, I'm not nobody. going where i don't yeah. have any troops and a bunch of power <laughs> he wants to stay a big fish in a little pond man yeah i'm not maybe. gonna go well i'm not gonna go to the but place also that's where, his home so i can't i can't bring my my thousand court courtinistas with me Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna go to a place where I'm like exposed and these motherfuckers can just shoot me in a palace. I'll just stay here. <laughs> I spent all of this stolen money yeah. building up yeah. these like, ranches. Dope yeah. They're dope. All right. Dope I ranches. love my ranches. Yeah. You want me to leave not my even. I have five properties yeah. in along the border. Like mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not leaving, man. I'm not doing yeah. No, I like, like it here. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> May of 72, there's a congressional joint resolution Mm -hmm. that is passed, which tasks President Grant with appointing a three-man commission to investigate the border depredations and basically appraise 
the value of all of the goods that were either stolen or yeah. property damage and all that stuff. It's called the Rob Commission, Rob with two Bs. They snoop around the area and there are claims by all these angry Texans that amount to a grand total of $48 million dollars mm-hmm. in like stolen goods and property damage and all this stuff and then mexico they're in response to this more or less they're basically like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. that figure sounds crazy high yeah. there's the comision pesquisidora which is appointed by lerdo to investigate the same thing only they do a little bit more of a, a thorough and i don't want to because there are problems with both yeah. but the 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 commission appointed by lerdo is a little more they at least interview people on both sides of the border Mm-hmm. And their conclusion is like, maybe you've misattributed some of these things to Cortina. Like, have you ever considered that your cattle was run off by maybe some Comanches or maybe the Texas Rangers or the people who like killed your or destroyed your ranch accidentally? Or there was like a drought that killed all your cattle and you're just trying to get get a claim for that or get reimbursed for cattle that wasn't killed directly by Cortina. Or maybe it just went to Wyoming or and Montana the- or Nebraska. <laughs> Like yeah, there's like all a, that. Yeah, they consider. just sold it up north. They just did a cow drive to go into. Maybe you just sold it. Yeah. The 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 Texas Rangers book, Ranger Ranger book I'm, I'm, I've read. They're like what they kind of are hinting at is like, it's also like both. It's it's not it's not either one. Yeah. It's also both yeah, of like. Yeah, yeah. There also are just like uh, white, uh, like bandits and american anglo texans and all sorts of type of robbers that have nothing to do with cortina that no i can sell this 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 these cat i can i can steal these cattle sell them across the border and mm. and I'll, I'll make money off that uh rather than it just being all a plot by cortina uh, by cortina it, it it seems like it was a collection of a plot by court uh by cortina a and also like just natural crime going on like a shit yeah. ton of natural crime but also a plot by court court to like him sending little, him sending out people, yeah. And him, and, but them also operating. People just fucking, it, yeah. People being shady and trying yeah. to get, trying to get money for shit that they've already sold, which because is like yeah, smart, but like, when he goes away, right. like when he goes away, it does slow down. Yeah, like it's not. Oh, he's not not doing anything. No, for sure. He's, <laughs> like, he's, like, yeah, he's 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 like, he's in it. That, yeah. That's the thing about the the commission that lerdo sets up because i'm not i'm not saying it again <laughs> yeah yeah the, um is that that's that's what they say is that they're a little bit too defensive of yeah. cortina whereas the other one is too damning yeah because like the numbers are just like yeah like it's not it's mm-hmm. fine now 48 million dollars come on <laughs> yeah were the, were the were the cows are you kidding yeah they said specifically was like that gal i think it's it, is it galvecki i think it's with galvecki Gal- 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 yeah Al- aldolfus galvecki was like but uh cortina's like mortal enemy they never they mm-hmm. always wants to kill mm-hmm. um He's like he's like they they already sold them, like mm-hmm. they was like it was like on their taxes are like for like less yeah yeah incredible trying, amount, trying like to just, double dip they're trying to d- like ten times they're trying to sell all that. I lost ten times what it's good for the GDP though right they're, isn't it yeah those dudes are shady <laughs> <laughs> December of seventy three Cortina is elected alcalde of Matamoros and. <laughs> He's, he's not a great mayor. No. Like in February of 1874, the Jersey City treasurer, Alexander D. Hamilton, absconds with a bunch of bonds mm-hmm. to Matamoros. And the U.S. is basically like, will you please give him back to us yeah. so we can indict him and charge him? And Cortina is basically like, I'm good. And you know how I can hang out with my new friend and all of his bonds. You, <laughs> you know? know? You know how sketchy you gotta be to be too sketchy for Jersey City? Mm. <laughs> like, like, that's pretty fucking sketchy, dude. That's pretty shady. That's pretty fucking shady. That's he shady escapes, fuck. dude. He yeah, escapes like, with all these bonds. They like try to find him, but he just disappears into yeah. San Luis Potosi, and then who knows from there? But he's gone. He's in the Mexico. <laughs> he's in the wind. They, at some point in Mexico, they just like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to go. Look for you. Like, We're not going that far south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is too, this is just too much. <laughs> And then from 74 to 75, I think it's 74, there's a raid on Nueces Town in Texas by some guys who may or may not have been affiliated with him, yeah. but is blamed on Cortina. And the Rangers retaliate and kill many Tejanos in yeah. the area. And Sheridan and Grant and Sherman all agree to reinforce Fort Brown, which I believe is like right on the border. And they, yeah. they're pressuring the U.S. government, like, please get Cortina out of Matamoros. We cannot put up with this. Like, it's 
Oh, the it's pressure of the Mexican government. Yes, the Mexican. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Mexican. Government. Uh, the the that like the Ranger of retaliation is like weird. Is is interesting just because like the they like like this guy Richard King who's like basically who owns King Ranch was like which is like one of the largest ranches in Texas. It's a masterful. Like it's when you think of that Texas cattleman ranch idea, this is one of those things. I think we, I think if you look, go look it up on the internet, you're going to recognize the symbol. Like he basically lobbies the governor because a lot of those fucking cattle that are getting stolen are his. Mm -hmm. And it's a shit ton of his shit. So he <laughs> fucking lobbies the governor. The governor sends the Texas Rangers to his house, like to his ranch. Damn. And he gives them brand new fucking like like t like a brand new fucking uh Winchesters. winchester 1873s okay so like nice. triples like like five times two times their, their firepower and then they go then they go do all that shit to those tejanos and to mexicans on Fuck. like they over there like that they, with those winchesters hmm. it, that it's, would... it's not getting this man's it's not getting this man's cattle back <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, man he's getting he's getting his shit back yeah. but it, i mean it's like it sounds like united fruit yeah, no, it sounds like United Fruit on a on a smaller, more local scale. I it's it is it is, it's yeah no that's that's a yes yeah, this this it's in South Texas or in Texas in general it is a United Fruit just for Texas it is a yes. thrill with cattle land it's it's that type of that type of it would be cool to deal. look into him because it sounds like the the seeds of just big money powers. Sticking oh, we'll, their fingers in government where it doesn't belong. Oh, we're know? gonna talk about like a lot. Of, yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting just like threads. It's, the with the Rangers and specifically, it's about like whoever has the cash, mm. like whoever's the yeah. money to interest on the side of the Texas government, and you're white. The it, it the they'll send the Rangers to get to your enemy. You just have mm. to lobby it. Like it's like it's like that. In the so early days, I haven't for I just, hire, uh, now. You know? I don't. Yeah, I'm not. Cause I don't know, about it. I don't know. Yeah, we gotten that far in the book yet. <laughs> July of seventy five, Lerdo partisans arrest Cortina and Matamoros. He's jailed in Mexico City for a few weeks mm -hmm. and then allowed to live. I think it's like a suburb of Mexico City, at Capulzalco. Yeah. And eventually, in August, so one month later, he declares against the Lerdista government because there's another uprising against the government, and he revolts and. I think he declares for for Diaz in July of se July of seventy six. Yeah, he's in Matamoros and he throws his lot in with the yeah with the yeah. Porfirios yeah. with Porfirio Diaz and like briefly reestablishes himself there. But this is like his final yeah. dalliance there, like his last hurrah. Uh, in April of seventy seven, he's rejailed in Santiago Platoloco, which is like a big prison in Mexico City, and he's like appealing his sentence. He's basically trying to figure out. Okay, what am I being what am I being charged with? You guys haven't told me. And he's suspecting that he was jailed by Diaz because Diaz wants recognition mm -hmm. by the US government. And he knew that holding Cortina would please the US. And eventually, like Rutherford B. Hayes does recognize Diaz's government and he gets that official stamp. Whether it's entirely due to him holding Cortina, I don't know, but it couldn't have hurt. Yeah. So from 78 to 18, uh, 1878 to 1894 it's a long period because the rest of his life is not that interesting yeah. he's released in 1878 but he's not allowed to leave mexico city now he lives the rest of his life out in atzcapotzalco he remarries and he starts documenting his life and correcting quote-unquote errors about it and like setting the record straight if you want to think at least his version of the record straight and then on october 30th of 1894 he dies of pneumonia and a heart failure in his home yeah one thing one thing uh that was interesting uh at, at the end of that book uh they said they talk about like a john ford guy mm -hmm. um who was like yeah. went there he was like there to like recorrect the record about like some of the stuff that that happened and like they talked and like he, the uh, john ford like said his wife was good looking yeah and then but the writer was super shady of this book yeah the and writer what, said it and he was like clearly if you look at the photo the he photo. was lying like, yeah whoa bro why do you have to yeah why are you shady as fuck like this bro <laughs> like, like, it's pretty harsh man you know what like, i mean bro, you're gonna crazy. talk about a man's wife like He's that especially funny. after you write a whole biography about him you're gonna go and be like shady. It's it's ugly was serious his wife was mad ugly you know like yeah do you like this guy <laughs> shady as fuck but no cortina overall it's i, I think the kind of 
I think at the beginning of what we said is like kind of Pancho Villa before Pancho Villa, it kind of set the standard for like this kind of I would say like kind of like Patron, mm-hmm. kind of that 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 you know, especially in this borderland area. Yeah, yeah. like kind of the, set the it's, standard. Cause it's it was lawless, a, but it's not. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's not lawless. It just doesn't abide to your law. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the yeah, and that's yeah. It's a law that's of the frontier, thing. law of the border, different law. All right. You know what I mean? It's different out here. Well, thank you, Henry, for doing a lot of research on that. Appreciate Thanks. that. Of course. Um, guys, that's been uh, Juan. I don't know how to say his middle name, Cortina. Nepoco so no. Nepo. Wait, Juan Necoposimo. No, just Nepo Cosimo. I guys, know. that's been Juan Cortina. Pomocino. Let's I just end know. it on Juan. <laughs> guys, that's, <laughs> guys, that's been Juan Cortina. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, next week, uh, who do we have, Henry? We are looking at a yet another outlaw not nearly as successful or uh, long-lived if you want to think of it like yeah. that a uh, little more little more famous of a name might ring some bells billy the kid okay we look at billy the kid that titanic struggle it all mm. a lot of things not titanic i mean it, it is a type it's a struggle kind of just a shithead from what yeah. i've read so far it he seems was like a shithead i think he has a titanic struggle with that sheriff but all right that's the whole thing we'll look yeah, yeah, yeah we'll yeah, talk yeah. about that yeah um uh guys thank you for listening uh please uh if you please follow us on mm-hmm. instagram at hard fried history uh facebook on at hard fried history on twitter at hfh podcast on mm-hmm. youtube at mm-hmm. hard fried history please mm-hmm. subscribe on youtube please mm-hmm. just please subscribe please subscribe on youtube uh, cool. guys follow me at all of the at my social media uh joshua b stokes on instagram and twitter and joshua stokes on facebook Henry, what about you? I'm about just you? Henry E. Price on Instagram, Henry Price on Facebook. And please review. Please rate and review wherever possible. That would be dope. Guys, you've been lovely. Thank you for spending mm-hmm. some time with us. We'll hope you come back and see us next time. I'm and again, again I'm happy hoping. new year. Right? Happy new year. Come back next time. That's All right, right, guys. All right. See you. Peace. Peace.